Joining us right now from Food & Wine Magazine is Ray Isle. He is their executive wine editor. And uh, Ray, thank you for being here. I'm always I thrilled always to be here. I always expect to see you this time of the year so that you can give us a heads up on what, yeah, what's coming. I, it's weird. I get very popular around the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly friends are like texting me. And, what's you know? the best one to go? It's been yeah. way too long. Uh, okay, so, so you brought a white to begin I with. I brought a white to begin I with. Which genuinely, I genuinely love. Yes. But this is a Riesling. This is a Riesling. And but that's this is, not what I generally but love. this is a dry Riesling. Meaning it's not as sweet? It's not sweet. The Germans actually drink more dry Riesling than they do sweet Riesling. Really? And so if you look on the Smells label, good. this one actually says dry, mm -hmm. and you take a sip, it's not sweet at all. That's it's great, a, it's actually. It's great. It's 12 bucks a bottle. It's I've a really, never had a Riesling I liked. Yeah, and it's a fantastic Thanksgiving wine. Uh, we got rosé. We got rosé. I thought that was a summertime thing. Uh, you know, rosé for, for, is a summertime thing, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to make the argument, and I have been making the argument, that rosé can be drunk all year long. This is, this is from I'm, Spain. I'm, I'm not going to look silly. I guess it looks festive. It looks pretty holiday. It looks festive. I mean, look, you, you basically are Christmas right there. There. That's right. <laughs> so, there we go. And, um, you know, this is El Coto from Spain. It's a little bit richer than, than your, your sort of Provencal style. A little sort of strawberry smell in those. Oh, yeah, that is sweeter. It really, it's got a little, you know, richness to the fruit. It's, um, Although I, not at the end. It's a again, little Again, it's, it's dry on the end. A little bit of tannins, um, you know. Spectacular wine for cocktail parties. Wait, I mean, you just said dry on the end. Was I right? Is yes, it yes, one? you were right. Gosh, you, you, I, I mean, I, we, we finally, I've been teaching you all this time. <laughs> you will go forth and become a wine expert. <laughs> and then we've got red. Um, what kind of red? I, this is an old vine red um, from Marietta Cellars. What does that um, mean? What kind of what kind of so grape is that? It's a it's a, it's a bunch of Zinfandel plus some other. Um, Carignan, other Rhone style grapes, all from the Sonoma area. It kind of replicates, you know, when there was Italian immigration to Sonoma in the late 1800s, they just planted a whole bunch of stuff all together, and it mm -hmm. kind of recreates that style of wine. It's, um, it's rich, Thank it's, you, it's pretty fruity. It's also, I, I, I wanted to bring a Sonoma wine hmm. um, because, you know, there were the fires recently. Right. In the end, I mean, there was a lot of trees that got burned up, but vineyards actually act as a fire break, mm -hmm. and the fire tends to run up and stop. So there wasn't that much damage to, there's one winery that even, burned down out of several hundred. Even the smoke hundred. that's in the air, that doesn't affect the grapes? Well, so 90, about 94, 95% of the grapes for this year were harvested before the fires. Okay. So, and anybody who's conscientious, those last 5%, they just didn't harvest them.